Umar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global, with the O2 for Lomachenko Campbell, joined by Dave Coldwell. How's everything? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Not bad. Not bad. It's not been, not been a great, great night professionally wise. I've, uh, I managed yeah, Atif Shafiq, um, so he got beat. Um, absolutely gutted for a kid, you know. But um, he's okay though, health wise. He's all right. Yeah, he's all right health wise, and he he, he, he he said it himself when he got back to the changing rooms him and his coach they were talking and he said he got greedy he felt that he had a bit of success early doors downstairs to Tennyson and held his feet and, and felt too comfortable in there whereas you know the game plan that Arun put together was don't stand in front of him give him the angles certainly don't go to the ropes and, and, and he did but he's still a young kid and he's learning it's all part of experience and, and they've got to learn from that and, and if they learn from it they come back as better fighters mm, I'm sure he will he started the fight really well to be yeah. fair yeah uh, okay Dave, you were out in uh, LA, was it, with Jordan Gill? Yes, and was Kobe Price, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're a big yeah. Uh, yeah. one for the future. Yeah, I, he's, yeah. he's literally very big. He's, he's like a six foot super bantamweight. Yeah, how was Jordan, though? He's very good. Do you know what? That was a great trip for him, um, mentally as well as. Because the reason being is I wanted to take him out of his comfort zone, make things uncomfortable for him, and, and get some quality sparring for him. And he just went to a, a level where I think now he realises and understands just how talented he is and just how good he is. Um, he was brilliant, you know. He's, um, I'm, I'm over the moon with him. And more importantly, we've come back. We've had a couple of spars since since we've been back, and you can see, you know, one thing about going to over to America and being, you know, we're in Freddie Roach's gym. Freddie and, and the team there really looked after us. We we, we kept that as a base. We also spent um, two or three days at Manny Robles' gym, Legends' gym. Mm. He was a diamond as well. Um, some great, great sparring. And it just seems to have, you know, it, it gives fighters um, mentally more more confidence and it just gives them more at ease about themselves. Once they go over there, spar with quality, quality fighters, you know, and come back, they, they just come back a different man. And, and that's certainly the case with Jordan. Okay. On his rise up, Jordan was uh, kind of becoming a fan favourite, but I'm sure you're well aware of the stick he received yeah. after his loss because of the kind of the, the food poisoning yeah. and, the, and the stomach bug. Some people fought it, some people didn't. How's he been after that? Has he been okay? No, for the first for the first couple of weeks, and yeah, it was it was it was it was, it was down. Obviously, I mean, any uh, if, if I was to say, oh no, it's fine, then you're just lying. But um, oh, it was it was down. Any fight that gets beat is down. You know, no matter what they say on the outside. Mate, this is their life, you know. They, regardless of what people want to say on Twitter and, and other social media platforms, they give everything to this sport. Mm. So they make a decision. They, he felt that, that I've explained this before, but he felt that he couldn't pull out because of the stick that on Twitter and social media that Josh Kelly got when he pulled out on the day against uh, the Amnesian. So he felt that he couldn't do it. People calling him a coward and this that and this. And, uh, didn't want that and the fighter believes a fight will always want to fight you know and when the fight is in the ring and the fight and sometimes you need the corner to pull them out because they're getting too much of a beating the fighter still wants to fight the fighter's done all the work he's trained he's sold his tickets he's spent x amount of weeks in camp dieting things like that he's done all that lot he still believes that it can get in there and just get through it film my way through it ah, so I, because fight, that's 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 why they're different to me and you because they have that belief, they have that in them where they think they can still go in there and do that. Now, had he told myself, or even his mum, his dad, or whatever, or his, you know, his, 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 his missus, if he'd have told anybody, we'd have been alerted to the situation, we'd have said, pull, pull. You know, it's not worth it, don't, you know, don't do it, don't be stupid, think about it long term. Mm. But fighters don't think that, they think about it right now. You know, you've got a fighter in here, you should just imagine, you've got a fighter in here who doesn't feel well right now, He's about to go out and, and, and box live on TV. Yeah, what's the chances that he's going to turn around even after what happened with Jordan? What's the chances that he's going to turn around and still say, I'll pull me out? Fact is not do that. Mm. And that's what you've got to understand. So yes, it was stupid. And yes, it was. he got a dressing down from the board. He got a dressing down from me. Yes, it was stupid. But in now, because he's gone through it and he got beat, he now realises that was worse than if he'd have just pulled out. Because you look at, you look at Josh, he pulled out bit of flat for a few days, couple of weeks, whatever. Comes back, gets you know, fights again, and, and everybody's forgotten about that. That's how life works. But when you're in that moment, you don't always think think smart. You don't think rationally. You don't think about what's going to happen down the line. You think about how it's going to affect you right now. And you know, you don't get. Jordan's not a groomed matchroom fighter. 
he had his opportunity, he took his opportunity, and now then he's worrying, thinking, well, I've only had a couple of shows. If I pull out now, they're gonna bin me off. That's how, that's how kids think because there's always somebody ready to take your place. Mm. So you have to you have to understand that you know the kids are human. So he made a mistake. It, it, it just took some flight from it, like you said. Some people believe it, some people don't. But you know it, that's that's it. Regardless of that, it's how he comes back from that. You know, and he, that's boxing. Okay, moving on to one of your other fighters, a small matter of Derek Chisora. Um, we're hearing this deal with Joseph Falco is practically done. Close, are we? It's, 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 I don't see a contract because I'm not his manager, but as far as I'm concerned, what I've been told, it's basically done. So, well, yeah. Great news. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a good fight, isn't it? It's Very a good, good fight. fight. So it'll be, it'll be an exciting fight, it'll be explosive. Um, yeah. It's, Parker's a good fight, mate. It's another. It's a hard fight for Derek. It's a hard fight for him. But you know what? He's. It's, it's not a southpaw. <laughs> um, so <laughs> he's I'm all right with them, though, isn't he, Derek? Uh, yeah. Considering what happened yeah. last time. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's gonna be. It's, he's gonna give it absolutely everything, and um, he knows that if he wins that fight. Wow, that puts him in a strong position mm -hmm. in this heavyweight mix. Mm -hmm. So. Trust me, Derek's gonna Derek's gonna go in there to blast Parker out. You know, there's not there's not gonna be any two ways about this. This will, however, however long that fight lasts, this fight will be it'll be exciting, and it's gonna you know it's an exciting fight for Derek to get his teeth into. Mm. I think after the Gashi fight, I think Parker would have been a strong favourite in that fight. But the performance Derek put out last time against Spilker, um, yeah, very close fight now going into yeah, it on paper. I, I would still, I would still. Parker's say, probably the favourite yeah, with the bookies, etc. Parker's, et Parker's yeah. a favourite. Yeah, I would still say that Parker's a favourite. But I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy for that with Derek. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And the fact that that Derek's got something to fight for, and people gonna, a lot of people are gonna think that he's gonna get beat. Derek, always, I think, I think Derek performs better like that. Um, and I think it gives him, especially at this stage of his career, it gives him that drive, that motivation. Mm. You know, this is it now, Derek. You've, you know, you've got to go out there and you've, you've got to perform in front of your two again. You love this venue. You've got to go out there and perform, give it your all, and, and, and you've got to beat Parker. You beat Parker and the world's your oyster. Oh, and the amount and, of and heavyweight matchroom we've got as well. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I think at this stage, to be honest, I think if Derek beats Parker, then, then He'll want a world title shot. He's not got many fights left in him. He's not got many camps left in him. You know, how many times can you, can just because somebody is tough, strong, and, and, and a warrior, how many times when, as they start getting older and they're taking a lot of punishment, how many times can they keep doing this? Is that you realistic know? though? Because so we've got Joshua Ruiz rematch coming up. If, if Ruiz gets them belts, right. I, I'm sure Al Heyman will try and make that undisputed fight. That could be a problem. If Joshua gets his belt, belts back, he's got the Pulev mandatory, yeah. etc. Yeah. Tyson's doing his thing yeah. with ESPN and going to have that wilder rematch. So where's that shot going to you, don't, you just You just don't know, do you? you, don't, you the, the thing is with the heavyweight division and with these belts and stuff like that, you don't actually know what's going to happen. Because what happens if... Uh, um, so let's just say Ruiz keeps the belts. Mm -hmm. What happens if Fury beats Wilder? That's a very interesting question. I'm okay, not so, sure whether so, that fight so, will happen though, so, if so, Ruiz wins the belt. But if Fury fights Wilder mm. and Fury wins, then that's Wilder out of equation for the next fight, right? Ruiz, will, I don't know how long he can keep hold of these belts before these managers start getting pissed off, they get vacated. What happens if then they get vacated and then there's, what, there's a fight that's got to be made? If you just beat Parker, then surely that gives you a chance of getting into that slot. Absolutely. Or even if, if the Ruiz Wilder fight is not there, Ruiz is looking around for an opponent as a champion. Why not Derek? Mm -hmm. But if AJ if AJ wins, then AJ might not be able to keep hold of the belts. And then one calls back. You, you just don't know. And then, like I said, Derek's in a... Listen, if you beat Parker, is in a strong position no matter what. He's in a strong position. And that's that's all you can ask for and that's all you can hope for. He'll be in a lot stronger position than what he's in right now. Um, and if AJ goes and blasts him, uh, blasts Ruiz out, then then you don't know what can happen then. All right, just lastly before we close off, how's Anthony? Oh, yeah, yeah your right. boy. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's good. It's, yeah, it's good, good yeah, win out yeah. uh, last time out against yeah, Rose. It was good. He, he had a lot of pressure on him for that, and um, I thought he boxed really well. He, he was he was very disciplined. And I was happy. I was happy with him. So he, he did well there because listen, you can say all you want. 
Brian's a good fighter and he's very experienced and, and you know he's got a good jab on him and he's got he's got movement on him and um, it was always going to be a difficult fight for Brian today. Um, but he, he he boxed well, he boxed discipline. If he'd gone in there stupid and not got rid of him, then then Brian could have jabbed his head off all night. Um, but he didn't. He was smart and he got the job done. Um, and we move on. He's got to, he's, listen. He's still got to improve. Um, had a bit of uh, listen. We have some good banter and have a bit of laugh. Always, always got a rip rip power. And I was like, you know, how um, <clears throat> before the Rose fight, he'd gone really quiet on the social media. Good, well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> but then. He's beat Brian Rose. As I said to him in the gym last week, he came out of the gym and says, fucking hell, you can tell that you want to fight. You're back on social media oh, no, again. Every tweet it. I see yeah, on my timeline. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, as, as long as, as, long as he's, uh, he, he remembers himself and he's, he's all right, he's, he's, I think he's learned his lessons. Um, he's just got to keep on improving uh, in the gym and, and, and just becoming a better fighter because there's a lot more tougher tests out there, you know? Okay, Dave Cole, well, thank you very much for your time at the O2. You're just not working tonight? No. Oh, okay. No, just, I'm Kitted here as a fan. I'm, I'm here as a fan, that's it. Kitted out I'm in here, designer I'm, gear. I'm, I'm here, no, I'm here as a fan, that's it. I'm, it's I think nice. we all are, Phil, yeah, aren't we? It's, it's nice to, to get to come to a show just as a fan and just just sit back, enjoy, no pressure, and, and that's it. Cheers, mate. Pleasure as always. Thank you. Right. thank you. Cheers, Dave.